Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. I hope that you have shared the broadcast. Let me tell you one of the reasons why you should not miss this broadcast that I do every Tuesday. I took it upon myself to educate you. I took it upon myself to help you. Because things are going wrong. Every blessed day, I was thinking that maybe as we go on, things will be okay. Things are not getting okay. Things are bad in Africa. And things are going from bad to worst. We are jumping from uh, frying pan, we are jumping direct into fire. So things are not okay for Africa. Things are not okay in Africa. This is why I take my time every blessed day to speak to you. Remember, if you have not followed this page, you are not following this page, prophecy one. You are missing a lot. Many of you are waiting for the time of politics to start. That is when, when you see Siawan is live, you join because it goes to 30,000, 40,000. There is time for everything. At this time, there are a lot and a lot of things that you can learn. So if you are not following this page, you are missing a lot. I also want to thank all my followers from around the world especially Zambia. 90% of my followers are from Zambia, followed by Nigeria, Botswana, Namibia, and Zimbabwe. May God bless you. Follow this page because there is a lot and a lot of things that you will learn. There are a lot of things. Joseph, Amos, once I say, uncle, God bless you. There is a lot and a lot of things that you learn from this page that you can never even if you pay millions at the university you can never learn it even if you pay billions at the school you can never learn them even if you go to church you will never learn them so that's why it's very very important for you to follow this page it's very very important thank you all the followers please speak about our current affairs here in zambia things are going bad in the next few minutes, we are going to jump into that. We are going to talk about that. Now, listen. <coughs> the thing that we want to discuss today that can help you, remember, see one is not a man of love. You know, to me, love does not exist. I don't want anybody to love me. Because anyone that says the truth does not have people that love him i'm not here on earth after love i don't need love i always say so if you want to follow me and you love me you are going to get disappointed because at a point i am going to say something that affects you and it it may be something that you don't like then you will not love me again so i don't <laughs> i don't Love and, and care does not exist in my diary. This is not what I came here to do on earth. It, I don't sell ice cream for you to love me. If you want to love people, you must love people that sell ice cream. You know, people that uh, hairdressers. I don't do any of those things. I'm a man of truth. And a person of truth does not have love. He says the truth no matter who you are, no matter where you are. So to some of you that follow me, sometimes you get disappointed when I speak against what you believe. You say, ah, see, I want, I'm disappointed. You are going to be more disappointed because I speak the truth. The Bible says, the Bible that you read, not me, the Bible that you read, the Bible that you believe as a Christian says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall do what? Set you free. So today we are touching this topic. I 
I was uh, following, I've been following what is happening in African soccer, African uh, uh, African Cup of Nations that is going on. A lady, a journalist uh, from Tanzania, he wanted to interview one of the, the players or the coach with Swahili. Swahili is the only African language, the only African existing language that at least people speak in some of these countries. And he was stopped. The calf said you cannot speak any other language here except French and English. So this brings us to where what I've been crying, what I've been, uh, what I've been touching year in, year out, saying that we are finished, we are gone. And this thing started from way back. Many of you that are listening to me, you are watching this video now. You, I want you to, to, to follow me with your brain. Don't follow me with your Bible or follow me with what your pastor say, what your bishop say. Follow me with your brain because the same God that gave you brain is the God that gave your pastor brain. The only thing is that your pastor is using his own wisely. You are not using your own wisely. So that is the only difference. So follow me with your brain if you want to understand something here. Many of you that are watching this clip are Christians. You are born again and you are Christians and you are keeping the faith of Christians. And if I ask you a question, how did you become a Christian? 90% of you will say, because I was born a Christian. It's not because we are given a choice to choose between Muslim, Christian, Hindu, Bundu, or uh, your, your traditional way of worship. No, you are, you are a Christian just because Sandra and Koma say, good afternoon, it's my first time watching. God bless you. You are, a, you, be, you are a Christian because you were born in a Christian family. Your father was a Christian. Your mother was a Christian. So therefore, you are born and you are a Christian. Same as a Muslim person. If you go to their family and you ask them, how did you become a Muslim person? That person is going to tell you, no, I became a Muslim because my mother is a Muslim. My father is a Muslim. It's rare you find someone that became a Christian or a Muslim by choice. We became Christian personally to me. The reason why I became a Christian is because my father was a Christian. My mother was a Christian. So I've grown up being a Christian. Whatever they told me about Christianity is what I've been following. This is the story of many of you. You became a Christian. You became a Muslim just because your parents made you to be you didn't have a choice to choose you didn't they didn't you didn't grow up and they tell you between christian and muslim choose no you grew up and found yourself you were born found yourself in a christian family and you followed it you have not had a personal choice but it's a choice that your parents made for you now as you grew up and start understanding this thing you must ask yourself one one question i'm not against bible i am a, i am a person that read bible with understanding you must start asking yourself some of the things that were found in the bible that is against africa why are they there People that follow me, those of you that followed me last week, heard how I define Bible. Bible is a constitution that guides believers. How did some of the things written in the Bible find themselves there? For example, the reason why Africa is being controlled by the whites, by the Europe, now by the Chinese, is because we didn't have a foundation. And up to today, we don't have a foundation. That is why everything they tell us, we believe. I am reading from BBC today that the United uh, World Health Organization are beginning to test the first malaria vaccine in Cameroon. It was not produced here in Africa. It was produced outside Africa, but it has to be tested in Africa. <laughs> I want you to be follow me very, very well. You understand where we are going. 
It was. It can't be produced. They can't allow it to be produced here in Africa because it's going to create job for African people. It's going to create wealth for African people. It was producing in outside Cameroon, but now it has been brought to Africa to be tested. So if somebody dies out of it, they don't care because this is not us. This is Africa. Now, see many deceptions. See where we got it wrong as Africans. Anything that you call name, you control that thing. Anything that you give them, you control that thing. Name is very, very powerful. Name is an identity. My name is Asia Andrew Edgemat. This is my real name. When I go out from this office, sorry, we have just had a little network problem, but we can proceed from here. Sorry about that. We had a little network problem. So anything you give them, that is what you control. Like I, I have just given an example. I said when we leave here now, after after my broadcast and after my office program, I leave here. As I'm on my way going out, if somebody sees me, my name is Andrew. If somebody sees me and start calling, Emmanuel, 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 I will not answer. Because that is not my name. Because that is not my identity. Name is very, very powerful. I want you to put that in your brain, number one, as we proceed today. Name is very powerful. And anything that gives you name controls you. Anyone that gives you name controls you. Are, we, are you following what I say? So, if, if I lose my name, I've lost my identity. And I will lose a lot of things. When, like you, I don't know your name. Maybe your name is Micah, like this, this, uh, this one that is following now. You say MM. Your name is Micah. If you are going on the way, somebody refuses to call you Micah, and start calling another name. Are you going to answer? No, you will not answer. Because that is not your name. So once you lose your name, you have lost your identity. Now, there is a culture in Christianity. Some of those things that I'm pointing out that are not supposed to be there. Things that are against Africa. Our parents grew up. And while they were growing up, they decide to give us good names. These are our local names in our languages. Names that are like a woman is giving birth or she struggled to give birth for many years. She tried to, uh, she tried to give birth or conceive for many years. She, she couldn't conceive. And all of a sudden, by the grace of God, later she conceives. And when she delivers that baby, she, she calls that baby, the, because of what I went through to conceive this baby, your name is Chuku Ebuka. Follow me well. Because those days, our forefathers and our foremothers, they were giving us names according to their experience, what they went through. Some of them, because of all that they went through, when they give birth to children, the, the, to a child, they will say, Chi de bere. Meaning, it's because of the mercy of God that I gave birth to this child. These are the names that our parents and our forefathers used to give us. This network is very bad. Airtel is a very useless network. I wish you know. If you have Airtel, throw it away. It's useless. So, network is useless today. It doesn't want us to learn. It doesn't want us to grow. So, if you have a tech, throw it away. That's a very, very useless network. So, like I was saying, they give us name. Our parents give us name according to what they went through. If a parent went through problems, through hell, when they give birth to that child, they will name that child Chukwa Loka. These are the names they were giving to us. They were giving us names according to the experience that they had in giving birth. They were giving us powerful quality names. But what happened? 
How did we miss it? How did we get here? What happened along the road? Along the road, Christianity was brought to us, to you and to me. And everything changed. In that Christianity, one of the reasons why that you must go to heaven, one of the quality, one of the quality that you must possess before you go to heaven is losing your name. That is called losing your identity. Because when you lose your name, once your name is lost, automatically you have lost your identity. So white man come to Africa and white man say, for you to go to heaven, you will give your life to Jesus, which we agree. After giving your life to Jesus, you must do baptism, which we agree. After doing baptism, you must change your name. Are you, are you hearing where we are going? This is where we lost it. That's why the Bible itself recommended that anyone that reads must think. In Nigeria, we say, in my language, Igbo language, we say, As you are reading, there are things that you must see, you think about it and say, how did this find itself in the Bible? For you to go to heaven, you must give your life to Christ, which you believe, repentance. You must accept Jesus, your personal Lord and Savior. Then you must do baptism. In that baptism, this is what happens. That is where every that is where we we make a lot of mistakes. That is where we are finished. That is where the war comes in. In that baptism, you are going to lose your name and replace it with the white man's name. Anyone that gives you a name controls you. Any name that you answer controls you. If you are a woman and you get you, you get married to a man, automatically your surname has changed. And because you have submitted to this man, your name must change. Anyone that you have submitted to, you must answer their name. This is what happened. Africa is under subjection. We are not ourselves. Slavery stopped long time ago, but slavery stayed there. If I must go to heaven by losing my identity, then heaven is not good. I want to listen to this very, very well. Look at what is happening to Africa and ourselves. And many men and women of God are not enlightened enough to share the truth to the people. You will give your life to Christ. You remove that name that your parents gave to you out of experience. Out of what they went through. A woman was looking for a child. For 20 years, she couldn't give birth to a child. In that 20 years, other women were laughing at her. Everyone was laughing at her. But the husband was saying, let us wait for the right time. The husband is supportive enough to say, God will do it for us. And finally, after 20 years, the woman gets pregnant and delivers the baby. And out of experience of what they went through, they named that child Ogechi. Meaning God's time is the best. Ogechi. God's time is the best. Now, Ogechi grows up and joins a Pentecostal church or an Anglican church or an uh, uh, um, uh, Orthodox church. And they told him to say, for you to go to heaven, you must pick up an English name, your baptismal name. Or get you will throw away that name that the parents gave to her out of experience or to him out of experience and carry a white man's name. And once that is done, you are ready to go to heaven. You are qualified to go to heaven. Is it true or false? That is why many of you that are watching this broadcast, you change your name from the name that your parents gave to you, your four parents gave to you, you are not answering Mr. Smith. <laughs> In 
Immediately that happens, you have lost your identity. If your parents are dead, they want to work for you. They want to locate you. They cannot locate you anymore because the name and the identity they gave to you has gone. They want to mention your name and speak good about you in the realm of the spirit. Unfortunately, the powerful name they gave you, when they call it, you don't appear. You are not answering Smith when they, when they gave you Ogget. Kezia, Eve, how are you, my daughter? God bless you. Are you following? <laughs> are you following exactly what are you follow? Are you understanding what I'm talking about? You see the reason why Africa is not progress. Our ancestors are failing to work for us. Our ancestors are failing to bless us because we have disconnected ourselves from them totally, including the name they gave to us. Your mother is praying for you in her grave. Your mother is interceding for you in the name of the spirit, mentioning your name. Chanda, Chanda, Chanda. Unfortunately, she cannot find Chanda. She's now finding Veronica. <laughs> what is Veronica? What is Smith? John, what is John? What is Andrew? Many of you don't even know the meaning. I remember when I was growing up, you know, as, as a Christian, in the things of the Christian. <coughs> Sorry. I remember when I was growing up as a Christian, in the things of the Christians. <laughs> and I've given my life to Christ and it is time for baptism and one of the rules is that you must pick an English name so we are searching for them because to us it was about fancy it was not about understanding it was about fancy those days nice names like Tony like, a, like you can see a, a a grown-up person who can throw away a wonderful name. Check all the names that our parents gave to us, our local names. All of them had meaning. They gave us those names. They gave us those names because of what they went through. It was out of experience. There are children that are born. Once they are born, they bring open door to the family. Our parents called them Obiano Ju. Any name they gave us had a meaning. But look at the names that we abandoned. So I remember those days I was, I, I wanted to give my life to, to Christ and you know, born again. I did, I, it was time for uh, baptism. And they told us, you know, you are not going to answer your Igbo name again. You must pick a, a, a name. And that name you must pick, it must be an English name. So we started looking for names. You know, when we go to school, we sit down together, we say, what name have you found for your baptism? This one will say, Emmanuel. That one will say, John. This one will say, what? This one will say, what? Then me, I said, I want to answer Valentine. Now, those days, I'm, I was a baby. I, don't, I didn't know the meaning of Valentine. Up to today, I don't even know the meaning of Valentine. I don't know. I just answered that name because it's sweet. It's posh. It's a beautiful name. Va, va, va. I answered it. So on the day of submitting of the names, we went. I met the man. The, the man that did baptism to me, the late man of God that did baptism to me, is late now. He was a very old man. When I submitted that name to him, Va, Valentine, he didn't object. He didn't say no because to him also, he doesn't know the meaning of that name. But because he's a Name. <clears throat> on that day of baptism, on that day that he was doing baptism to me, he said, now, vow, being a born again, giving your life to Christ, I change your name now from Esdiah to 
vow in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. He doesn't know the meaning of vow. I myself that took that name, I didn't know the meaning of it. Up to today, I don't know the meaning of vow. But the good name that they, my, my parents gave to me, is yeah, I pushed them aside. In all my documents, it was now vow, Ejimad, Valentine, Ejimad. And people started calling me Valentine, Ejimad. From there already, I've cut myself off from my root. I've cut my name off from where it's coming from. Even in the realm of the spirit, I've cut out my blessing. Because I've changed name. Once you change your name, you have changed your identity. I hope you are following what I'm talking about. So white people are so wise that when they got the Bible, they put it. You must change your name for you to go to heaven. The God that created heaven and earth that brought us to Africa and didn't give us African name. Is it stupid? The God that created heaven and earth and gave us this skin and brought us here. Is he not wise? So this, this is where the problem is coming from. Once your name is changed, you have lost your identity. Those days they were calling our parents, they, they, they force them to become Christian and they give them nails. Mabel. What is the name of Mabel? The good name that your parents gave to you, you have cut yourself off out of it. You have removed yourself out of it. Now you are answering a white man's name. Tony, Masha, Mishek. <laughs> What is the meaning of this? You don't even know. You chose to take them because they are English names. That is why up to today we are being controlled by the English. I have a Chinese businessman. In his document, each time we go to the bank to fill form for his document, I find it very difficult to write his name. And I ask him to say, why is it that you can't put at least an English name here? He said, I'm not an English, I'm a Chinese. Chinese refuse to lose their root. Chinese refuse to lose their language. Chinese refuse to lose their identity. Chinese refuse to lose all they inherited from their parents. That is why they are progressing today. We as Africa that have lost everything, where are we? What have we achieved? Who are we here on earth? Don't argue with me that in so many African countries today, they don't teach African language. There is no single African language taught in that school. That is why when you go to the school, whether secondary school or primary school or uh, university, they will tell you English language is a must. For you to be accepted for this course that you want to do, English language is a must. Even if it, that, what you want to do does not consign English, English language is a must. I've never, I've been to so many countries around the world, including America. I've never heard any single school that made an African language a must. But in Africa, from a child that is born today, he must learn how to speak English. I said it. I was very disappointed when I heard from CAF that they don't entertain Swahili language. You must answer Smith. You must speak English. That is why in Africa today, speaking good English is a measure of intelligence. You can see a man or a woman rise up, all he knows is how to speak English. And people think that is intelligence. People think that this one is wise. A person that can speak English fluently doesn't know how to speak his language. A person can speak English from here to Jerusalem, but his poor is broke. He can't achieve anything. Go around the world today. Most of the billionaires and millionaires are those who don't even know how to speak English, especially here in Africa. Those that are doing well, they don't know how to speak English. 
When they speak English, you can laugh at them. But they are doing very well. They are doing perfectly well. Here, English is a measure of understanding. Because we have lost our culture. We have lost our name. Many of you, if I ask you to write your name now, okay, all of you that are watching me, there are thousands of people that are watching me, type your name in the comment section I want to read. You will see, majority of you will type English. You, if many of you have even forgotten your root, your cultural name. You don't even know it. Once you cut, once somebody gives you a name and you bear that name, you are finished. You think that white people are fools. You think that white people are not wise. They are wise. That is why they tell you, for you to go to heaven, that place, in heaven, they are. They have not been there themselves. They have never been to heaven themselves. And they don't even want to go there. But they tell you, oh, for you to go there, you must change your name. What has name got to do with going to heaven and character? So you see somebody, he gives you a name, an English name, he controls you. That is why an African country today is a slave to one European country or the other, or the Chinese. As we speak today, the money that the Nigerian government is owing IMF, the money that we are owing France, the money that we are owing England, USA, now China, we cannot even pay it forever and ever. This is another colonialism. We are still slaves to them because we are answering their name. So many countries in Africa, they don't even, they don't even have a kobo, a penny, of theirs, they must borrow. Everything they want to do, it must be borrowed. All the big companies in the country are foreign com com companies. If you go to South Africa, 90% of everything you see there is owned by white people, foreigners. It's the name that they give to you. I was in South Africa, I was about to open a, a bank account with FNB, and I went there, I filled my, my name the mistake I made was, <coughs> listen to this, the mistake I made was, I started filling the form with Ejimad, which is my surname, E-J-I-M-A-D-U. I put it where they wrote first name. Then, my second name, I put it Ezia. Then, last, where they say last name, I went, I put Andrew, my English name. When I submitted it, they rejected the application. Do you know what they told me? They said, your first name is the English name. Many of you check your passport. I mean, check your passport right now. You will see. Hold on, please. If you check your passport now, you are going to see that. If you check your passport now, you are going to see that your first name is an English name. They told me, they, they openly told me at FNB, they said to me to say, sir, you cannot open account with names like this. First name, English, Andrew must come first. That is how it is, and that is how we have been controlled, and that is how even Christians, believers have been controlled, and they cannot think like a human being. It is so painful because they cannot think like human beings. All they know is prayer. Shaky ba 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 ba. But their brain does not work. But their brain is not effective. You came out and inherited the religion from your parents. And you say, I'm going to die for this religion. That is why you see Christians are fighting Muslims. Muslims are fighting Christians. But we are serving the same God. A person that is born in, in Muslim, not converted, born in Muslim, he didn't have a choice. He, he has never tested Christianity. 
but he's born a Muslim. Just because he was born a Muslim, his father was a Muslim, he tells you, our Muslim is the best. If you do not, be, if you are not a Muslim, you will not go to heaven. He has never had an opportunity. He has never, sorry about that, please, I want to. He has never had an opportunity or a choice to be a Muslim or a Christian. Just because he was born a Muslim, he believed that Muslim is the best. Same as a Christian. There are many Christians that believe that Muslims will go to hell. They believe that only them are the right people. The rest are bad. It's something that you have never experienced. Your parents gave birth to you and you became a Christian. And now you are saying you are the best. Others are bad. Muslim is going to come here and tell you to say, our God is so powerful. But when there is problem, they kill somebody for their God. They fight for their God. Instead of allowing their God to fight for them. But their God is very powerful. Same as Christians. It's because we lack understanding. It's because we forgot where we are coming from. It's because we don't have roots where we are coming from. That is why I'm encouraging everyone that is listening to this program, a believer, a child of God, or whatever you are, to reason like a human being. Think about where you are coming from. Must you lose your name before you go to heaven? What is so special about a white man's language and a white man's name? Does it mean our forefathers that died without English in them, they cannot make heaven? Or they did not make heaven? So these are the errors. When I come back uh, next week, I am going to teach you on how to go back to the root. How our forefathers, who they were serving, how they were serving. They were serving a living God. Many of you think that they were they, they we are serving water spirit like what our young boys and young men are doing on Facebook or social media today. Killing fowl, throwing it in the river. Killing a cow, throwing it in the river. You are polluting our, our, live, our rivers. Our forefathers did not do that. If our forefathers were polluting the rivers, you we are not going to find any river. I came from Amozar. Omar Green here, you see Alaban local government. In our local government, in our community, we had a stream. It's called Miroma, the river of Omar, Omar Green River. One of the best streams in Nigeria. If not the best, people used to come from all over the world to fetch water from there. Do you know why we, in our generation, we met the stream? It's because our forefathers and foreigners did not pollute the river. They were not throwing chicken in the name of serving mommy water. They were not throwing uh, goat in the name of serving mommy water. They were not throwing cow in the name of serving mommy water. Many rivers in Africa today, many rivers, especially in Nigeria and Ebola, many rivers are going. It's now dirty. You cannot even go. The last time I went there, I saw biscuit. People are polluting our river, saying that they are, they, are, they are going back to the root. That is not the root. When I come back here next week, I will tell you how, who they were serving, how they managed to succeed in finding the true God and lived long and successful. Going back to our root is not going to uh, witch doctors. Our, our forefathers and foremothers, we are not witch doctors. They didn't practice satanism. They were not killing people. What we call our culture of serving mommy water, our culture of polluting the river in the name of Hapagaja, that is not what our forefathers did. If they did it, we were not going to have rivers. Because when we met our rivers, they were very neat and very clean. Our forefathers kept them clean. They were not throwing chickens and everything is there. Meaning they were not practicing those things. That's not our culture. 
Sometimes when I speak here and when I finish speaking, which uh, some small, small, which doctor, all these comedians that call themselves DBS, here's the one, here's the work in Nigeria. They cut the clip and say, hey, see, see now, original prophet is supporting us, he's telling us to go and serve mommy water. Our forefathers did not serve mommy water. Our forefathers did not serve mommy water. You are just destroying our rivers for nothing. You are just wasting your useless time there. I say one is supporting us. He's telling us to go back to our route. They were not dirty. All those things you call house, uh, house of mommy water, where you pour blood and the, our forefathers were not doing those things. Those are the things that we are told and you believe. They were not doing those things. They were neat. I'll come and tell you what they were doing, how they succeeded, how they prospered. I myself, the secret of my wealth. I'll tell you. Lose, listen. Many people, I see a one, the church is so big, he's making billions upon billions from his church. What, what? See, a one is eating tight and offering. What, what? So have you seen a man of God who can come boldly and say what I'm saying? If you have seen, tell me. Hmm? Have you seen a man of God who can come and tell you the truth, do I'm saying it? No, they can't. If they say it, all their church members will run away and they will not have food to eat. Personally, to say when I say it, because I don't depend on member. Member can't give me anything. There is a secret to everything. And this is what our forefathers and foremothers were doing. And they were blessed. Those days, Obaji, Nanai, it was from here to that site. They were so blessed abundantly. Forget about these idiots that are growing, that are speaking against our forefathers. Eh, our forefathers were poor. Eh, our forefathers were this. You that is serving God now in this generation. Imureji. Imurobaji. Ordinary you get you get. You don't have it. But those days there was abundance of food. They may not drive cars. Maybe they were not driving big cars. But they they didn't die of hunger. It's only this generation right now that people can just come on the road. They die. Hunger has killed them. Those days, there was no, there was no hunger. In fact, those days, there was no fertilizer. When they plant, the yam comes like this. As big as this. Every family was eating well. Every family was feeding well. Why do you think that God was blessing them those days? Now that we have Bible, now that we have Christianity, what is happening? Uh, now that you can afford a car and you can afford a telephone, how old are you going to reach before you die? Because those days, they were not dying. My, the, the, uh, my great grandmother, I met her. Those days, people were strong. God blessed them abundantly. Why do you think that God was blessing them? If they were evil, like you say, if they were in hell right now, if they are, if they are in hell right now, how do you think they were blessed? Tell me. Without doctor, without the best hospital on earth, they lived 100 years, 120. When they die of 8 years old, they used to cry. They say, ah, this one has died very young. Today, when someone dies 50 years old, 60, people will clap to say, at least he has tried. Obaliala. <laughs> so you can see that those people, they knew God then more than us. They were favored by God then more than us because they didn't cut themselves off from their root. It is the more we pray now, the more Christianity has come now, is the more problem have come. In fact, Christianity has brought more evil than good. Christianity is only in Christianity where it has been now agreed that a man will get married to a man. It's only in Christianity. You can't try that in a Muslim. That original religion, that one that is shaking, Holy Ghost fire, 
It's only in that religion is where you are going to find atrocities. It's in that religion where a man of God that is married will sleep with all the whole church members. It doesn't happen during our, our, the time of our forefathers. It was not there. It was not happening. It's only in Christian where the man of God knows that this one is a married woman. He's a church member. He sleeps with her. In Zambia, one idiot that called himself uh, John General, he left his wife at home and followed the woman to go and sleep with her. Not just in a, not just in a hotel. At least you respect the husband of that lady. At least you respect. Where, where is the fear of God? According to you, those of you that say, Shaky Mama, especially Pentecostal, this is the most useless organization on earth, Pentecostal. Criminal organization. Evil organization. John General left his house. Followed a woman in a house, a married woman for that matter. To make the matter worse, if at least you respect, if that, if your penis cannot be quiet, if your penis you can't control it, call the woman out, do it in the parlor. You can't sleep with a married woman on the bed where she sleeps with her husband. It means you have already killed that man. That man will never recover from that trauma from generation to generation. At least. It's only in Christian where you see these things happening. Our forefathers could not do this. In the, during the days of our forefathers, if you sleep with somebody that is not your wife, they will kill you. You will die. But today, what is happening? Eh? Men of God that preach the gospel are the ones. Okay, that's why, to me, people look at me. Ah, ah see, I want, see, I want is a satanist. See, I want don't believe in Bible. I cannot believe in the Bible that you are reading the same Bible that I'm reading, and you are doing a different thing. I cannot be a fool. The people that brought that Bible to me now tells me that a man can now marry a man. And you are a fool to believe everything that you read. I can't. That is not see a one. You must, you must live by example. If you wrote this Bible and say, this is A, that A must remain A forever and ever. Not tomorrow you come and change A and make A to B and B to A and then you tell me to believe it. I'm not a fool. It's only now in this Christian where a man of God, he doesn't have a gun, but he can use Bible to rob you. A man came here in my church, in Nemo State now. A man came from Dubai. When he arrived in Nigeria, he had a problem. And he went to a man of God, a prophet, said, please help me solve this problem. That man of God scammed him all the lands he bought. Everything he had and left him homeless. As we speak now, that man is in Nigeria. He doesn't have money to go back to Dubai. The reason why he went to the man of God didn't even happen. They couldn't solve the problem until he met Sia One. The one they call Satanist. I started solving the problem. That is why I always tell you this. If you are married and your wife Love your man of God more than you. Divorce her. What did I say? Divorce her. Don't open your mouth and say God hates divorce. God has never married before, so he doesn't he doesn't he has not tested marriage. Jesus has never married before, he has not tested marriage. Moses uh, not Moses, uh, 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 Peter, most of the people in the Bible that did, they didn't marry. So don't come and say God hates divorce. 
He didn't test marriage. If marriage doesn't go well, divorce. If you don't have power to put your husband in a bottle, and your husband is running up and down, you don't have the finances to put him in a, in a bottle, and your husband is going from skate to skate, skate to skate, skate to skate, and you are still in that marriage because you believe that one day he will change. He won't change. He will bring sickness and give you. You will die. I'm telling you the gospel truth. The truth I'm telling you, no one is going to tell it to you. No one is going to tell you this truth. If you are married, on Sunday, you go to church. On Monday, your wife, women's meeting. On Tuesday, usher meeting. On Wednesday, workers day. On Friday, she's always in the church. Leave her for that past. Look for another woman and marry. Go and marry another lady. Leave that one for your pastor. I'm telling you something that you I'm telling you something that will help you. I'm telling you something that will build you. It's only in Christianity where you find robbery. It's only in Christianity where a man of God will be bold enough to tell his congregation to give him the, their whole salary of January. Who doesn't know that January is the toughest month in every year? January is the month that many people kill themselves. In December, spending is inevitable. No matter how good you are in spending, you cannot control it. You must spend Eager spend the relego. You must spend money in December. It's a guarantee. Whether you like it or not, even if you say, okay, I'm not going anywhere. Let me stay in my house. Once you open your door, money has left your pocket. Just opening the door, money has left your pocket. Now, January is the toughest month to everybody. Even me, no matter how blessed I am, January shakes me. Because January, bill is here. Bill is there. Bill is there. Bill is there. You pay this bill. You pay this bill. And a man of God has the courage and God to tell you to say, all your salary in January, bring it to me. It's your first fruit. It can only happen in Christianity. And there are zombie. Christian is where you find a lot of zombies. A lot of people that don't have brain. If you want to see them, come to Christianity, you'll see them. A lot of people that are useless, they are there. Some, some even wear suit. Some wear the best dress on earth, but in their brain, there is charcoal. There is nothing at all. They will carry their whole salary as first fruit in the month of January and give to the pastor. Pastor will use it and solve his January problem. Who doesn't have a problem? I wish I'm the one you are, you are giving. It can help me to solve my January problem. Now, pastor will use that money and solve his problems. How about your problems at home? Eh? Is your pastor also going to give you his first fruit to solve your problem? To pay your children's school fees? To pay your house rent? This is where the Bible says that people perish because of lack of what? Knowledge. He wants you. You perish because you don't have knowledge. Not because he's not seeing you. He's seen you, but you perish. You carry all your salary. Your salary comes. Boom. And you know salary earners. You people that eat salary. You know that before salary comes, many of you, before salary comes, you have already budgeted for it. Some go to rent. The people that you are owing, this ones and this one, some of you took money from the bank. You, you are paying loan. Now, that money comes, boom, 100000 You carry the whole 100000 and give to the man of God. How are you going to pay your loan? Tomorrow, when you die of high BP, the man of God will say, Oh, our brother has gone to heaven to be with the Lord. But he doesn't want to go to heaven himself to be with the Lord. <laughs> he wants to be here. <laughs> He's sending you to heaven to go to heaven and be with the Lord. But him, he wants to be here. <laughs> Are you sharing this broadcast to open the eyes of people that don't want their eyes to be open? 
Are you sharing it? Share it right now. Share it right now. Let people's eyes be open. People are perishing here in Africa. Huh? Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? So you have carried all your salary and give to the man of God. Now, bank has come. Sister, the money that you are owing us this month, you didn't pay. Shoo, your heart. You call the man of God. Say, man of God, bank people have come. He will tell you, I'm going to pray for you. <laughs> bank people don't need prayer. They need money. You have taken the money. <laughs> and you are about to lose a sister of high blood pressure. Have you ever gone to ShopRite to go and buy something and they tell you to pay? You say, I use the money to, to pay my first fruit. My pastor will bless you. Will they agree? What will your children eat if you pay that first fruit? There is tithe. You give your tithe. There is offering. You give your offering. There is seed. If you want, you plant. But carrying your whole salary and giving it to a man of God. At the end of the day, that man of God will buy a private jet. You don't even have a bicycle. You are a fool. You are what? Tap your chest and say, I am a fool. That's what you are. Hold your right hand on your head and say, I am a fool. That's what you are. At the end of the day, man of God will carry that first fruit and build a school. And your children cannot even afford that school. Your children cannot write exam in that school if they are owing their school fees. But it's your money. You built it using your first fruit. You know what you are? Call yourself a fool. At the end of the day, you die. When you die, the man of God will not even attend your burial. He will send the catechist. They will bury you. That settles the case. He will proceed with another person. When will Africa people wake up? When are we going to see that Christianity that was supposed to bring life to us has brought death to us? Not because Christianity is not good. There are good things that came with Christianity. There are good things that came with modernization with white people. But we have embraced the wrong ones. We have we 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 have we are overdoing it. We are what? Overdoing it. <laughs> we are overdoing it. And I, men and women of God, you must have the conscience of a leader, not a pastor or a prophet. Forget about this. In Africa, don't need pastors. They don't need prophet. They don't need bishop. All these people have disappointed us before. All the presidents in Africa, all these criminals that will have that will call president, they have men and women of God where they belong where they go to seek counsel. But they are never told the truth. They lie to them. They tell them, ah, the people love you. Everything is okay in the country. Don't worry. What is happening in your country is not your fault. It's, it's also happening in other people's country. Men of God tell them this. They don't tell them the truth. Disappointment is coming from the pulpit. The time... We, the, the quicker we start enlightening our people, teaching them the right thing that they need to know, the better. How can you come to Nigeria, an Igbo land like this, and you have nine subjects? Out of that nine subject, Igbo language is not learned there. When I was growing up in my school, they even have a register for those that speak Igbo language. They call it vernacular. If you make mistake to speak Igbo language, they will write your name. When the teacher comes, he will flog you. He will flog you for speaking your own language that God gave to you. You'll be beaten for speaking your language. In Africa, it's happening. 
There are schools in Africa that you can never speak vernacular there. You can't use Bemba. You can't use Tonga. You can't use Nyanja. You can't use Igbo. You can't use Aosa. You can't use Yoruba. It's only English that you must speak. If you speak anything as, apart from English, the, your name will be written. They will punish you. They will tell you to watch the whole school for speaking the language that God bless you with. What is the crime there? That is the crime. There are people who have capacity. They have bread, but they don't know how to speak. So they are failing to come and contribute to the society because when they come and speak, people will laugh at them. Ha, 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 ha. But they have the capacity. You that know how to speak English, what have you achieved on earth in your name? In your name. English speaker, English master, slave master. What have you achieved in your name with good English? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. But see those on the streets. See those guys on the street who don't know how to speak English. See them striving because they use their brain. You, you use a white man's brain. I feel pity for you. I believe that this program is opening your eyes gradually, gradually, gradually. Make sure that you are sharing this post. If you have not followed CR1, you are not following CR1, follow this page. Remember there are a lot of scammers using my name to scam people. They are uncountable. They are uncountable. They are using my name to scam people. CR1 will never send a message to you on Facebook. CR1 will never reply you on Facebook. CR1 will never send his number to you on Facebook. Anyone that is replying you, anyone that is talking to you, anyone that is chatting with you on Facebook is a criminal. CR1 can never send a friend request to you on Facebook. This is the only Facebook page that I have, Prophet CR1. And it's verified with a blue tick, with over 900 and of over 999,000 followers. Follow this page so that you'll be learning. As a man of God, follow this page so that you'll be learning. You'll be teaching your church. When I came to Ore, I inherited a lot and a lot of Christian, over righteous people, but poor. Very poor people, but they are very righteous. Why? Because they were after heaven. They were targeting heaven. They were, oh, the people that, Africa. Africa people are the ones that want to go to heaven to wear a crown. When here on earth, they can't buy a first cap. <laughs> <laughs> I feel sorry for Africans. <laughs> so if you are, if you have not liked this page, if you have not followed this page, follow it now. Follow it now. Every Tuesday, I will be here to be opening your eyes. I will be here. To be open your eyes. I will open it until you see. Now we know where. I have the best congregation in this state. People that are doing very well. People that are now left. Whatever they are doing. They are now looking for a way to uplift the life of themselves and their families. People are becoming successful every day. They now understand that money is important. Wealth is very, very important. We have now a standard church, one of the best and one of the biggest. Their eyes are open. My church member, you cannot scare them with the Bible again. There is nothing that you are going to say that will move them. Because now, they are learned and they are learning. This is how you grow as you follow this page. So follow this page now. Now, now, as I'm talking, if you have not followed it, follow it so that you'll be learning a lot. 
Anytime I'm live, you'll get notification. Anytime I post something, you'll get notification. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Alright, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.